Hello there, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have a quick and easy art journal page for you, so get comfy and let's get crafty. I am using the Stamparita Arctic Antarctic 8x8 paper pad as well as my 8x8 mixed media pad. And I am going to pit, use just two papers from the same pad. I have chosen this paper as the background. It's kind of collage put together paper. And I'm going to use three images on this image card. I'll use the wolf, the whale tail, and the penguins. I'm also using this life is an expedition tag out of the front cover. And I love that you can use like the front and back covers of these Stamparia paper pads. They're beautiful, all of them. Um, I think the back cover is the only piece you probably really couldn't use. All right, so my plan with this background sheet is to take this collage look and trim it apart and then reassemble it so that it kind of emphasizes that collage idea that was created by Stamparia when they put this paper together. This is something I like to do when I have a, a piece of pattern paper that looks like it has been collaged together. In fact, I look for those types of papers often because it is an easy way to do a background. Um, I, on the last art journal page, instead of um, cutting it apart, I just used a colored pencil and I will link to that um, at the end of the video and below if I remember. But I am just cutting apart this collage look and um, taking apart all of the parts that are actually images on other pages in this um, paper pad. And now I'm going to use my Fiskars trimmer to trim down the um, image cards that I want to use. Like I said, I'm using the whale tail, the penguins, and the wolf image, the winter wolf image or white wolf image, whatever it's real name is. I don't know. I am not a zoologist. I like looking at animals. Don't necessarily need to know all the things about them. Like my 10 year old, he needs to know all the things about all the animals all the time. At least the ones he's currently interested in. <laughs> um, once I get these all trimmed down, I do have another way of emphasizing this kind of collage look, and that is to ink up the edges. So I am going to pull my archival ink out and I have two colors of blue. I have this um, cornflower and um, cobalt and I went ahead and went with the corn cornflower blue. It's a little bit lighter and a sponge. What's that called? An ink blending sponge, whatever those things are called. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink around the edges of all of the, pe the pieces of that background paper that I cut apart. And this again is just something that I do to emphasize that collage look. Now, if you don't have ink pads and ink sponges, which you could use any ink you wanted and any kind of, you could even take the cut up pieces just across the top of your ink pad. You could also use the side of a marker, even a Crayola marker. You could use a color pencil. You could not do this at all and, and have it be just fine. Like I said, this is just something I wanted to do. Um, I think that this type of art journaling is something that anybody who doesn't have a lot of supplies could do because really I'm using two pieces of pattern paper. Somebody has already done the artwork for me. I'm just kind of taking it apart and, and recreating it into my own style. That's all. Um, and that's one of the things I love about these Stamparia pads is that the artwork is so beautiful that you really can create beautiful art journal pages, beautiful cards, beautiful layouts with these, um, with Stamparia's products. I did take the image cards and go around the outside edge of the image card. Um, my thought process there was that it would pull it off the back of the page a little bit because this is a very monochromatic art journal page. So now the trick is to reassemble this paper that I cut apart and I did not pay attention to what I was doing. Um, it was a minute like that top, that piece on the top left. I have that upside down. It was totally a minute and I didn't have much of a reference on the back cover on the back of the back cover of this paper pad. There is like a little screenshot of how all the papers, all the papers in the pad. And so that is what I kind of looked at to kind of figure out um, how to put it back together. But it really did take me a minute. And this was probably the most fiddly part of the art journal page. All right. So now that I have it all reassembled how I think it's or how it's supposed to go, I am going to glue it into my art journal page. 
and I am not using mixed media or um, gel medium or anything like that. I'm using a regular old school glue stick. I do have some scrap paper off to the side so that I can flip that um, piece of pattern paper over, get the glue all over the back and without getting extra glue on my art journal page, which in this instance, it probably wouldn't have mattered, but this is just something I have started doing when I'm collaging to make sure that the glue stays on the glue paper and doesn't get anywhere that I don't need it. One thing I did forget is that even though my uh, mixed media pad is eight by eight, that is clear to the top underneath the coil. And I forgot to trim this paper down a little bit. So once I got all the pieces glued on, I just kind of off screen went and trimmed those down with um, my paper trimmer and with my scissors. Um, you'll notice that the finished page is not exactly centered and that's because I just forgot stuff. <laughs> I forgot to, you know, measure twice and cut once. Yeah, I just forgot that. I was just kind of in a, a play around mode. Um, and, and normally I try to make less um, monochrome pages because I feel like they're a little bit harder to see. One thing I had a little bit of a gap here in the top right hand corner and I thought I would use my my um, pit pens to fill that in. It was a little darker than I wanted so then I went back over it with the brown and it still kind of overemphasized that gap that I was trying to hide. So here's what you do when you, and and it's not going to smear because it's not a non-porous surface right. There's no clear gesso there's no um, gel medium, there's nothing on this page. I'm not sure what my brain thought <laughs> it was going to do. But when you do something like this that you don't like, and I did contemplate going around all of the corners or all of the edges again, but then I thought, you know what? No, I'm just going to stick my focal image right there on top of it. And 90% of it will be hidden and nobody will see it and it won't matter. So this is how I intend to put my images on. And I feel like they're blending in just a little bit too much, even for a monochromatic page. So I've dug in my scrap bin and pulled out uh, some gray cardstock. And I'm just going to make a very tiny mat on all of these, the three image cards and the title or the quote for the page. And again, I'm just using glue stick. No, I lied. I'm using my ATG gun, my double-sided tape runner to adhere these, um, image cards down to the cardstock. And then I, once I have them all laid out on there, I am going to trim them down with my trimmer. And like I said, the tiniest of border. And that's just because I felt like it needed to um, pop off the page just a little bit more. So another thing I am using scrap. All of this cardstock came out of a little bin on my desk where I keep, I kind of try to organize it. I have dividers so that it's kind of mostly organized by color, but I have multiple colors of gray in my gray area. And the only other piece I had that was the same color was this one that's been punched out of, like there's, there's pieces missing, right? So I'm going to figure out how I can use this paper that's, you know, I've just got to line it up just right. And I figured out that there's enough space between those three punches or holes punched out, whatever you want to call that, that I can, get the, the bottom edge of my image matted. And this is a great way to use scraps. I know um, a lot of times when I am doing layering on cards, especially cards that I'm not videoing, if there's going to be a mat, I will cut out the middle of that mat and use that scrap paper, that the, the middle of that that you're not gonna see, especially if it's like a glitter or a metallic paper that tends to be a little bit, um, more expensive than your average cardstock. <laughs> and then I pop things up on foam tape and nobody knows the difference. All right, so now that I have those image cards all matted, I am going to go ahead and trim them down with my Fiskars trimmer. Um, I, I do like my Fiskars trimmer for detail work. Um, my eyes are getting older and I just have not mastered the guillotine trimmer for precision cuts. I know a lot of people are really good with that. I am not one of them. <laughs> I just kind of like, and, and to be fair, I have used this Fiskars trimmer for my heavens. My first trimmer was the Cricut trimmer and I didn't like how you had to lift up the plastic guide and put it back down as opposed to just open it and shut it. So I think I bought my first Fiskars wire guided trimmer 
when I very first started um, getting back into scrapbooking after moving to Virginia. So it's been um, 17 years almost since we've been here. So I've had a Fisker's trimmer, a wire guided Fisker's trimmer for a long time. Not the same one. I did have one that sometime in, I don't know, six or seven years ago, my husband was using it for things probably that he shouldn't have been, you know, super thick things and the wire snapped. So I did have to replace the wire, but he's only allowed to use that one now. It doesn't have a wire, but it still cuts things fine. And he's, that's the only one he's allowed to use now. <laughs> okay. I have my images matted onto that gray cardstock and it does pull them up just a little bit more. And that was more pleasing to my eye. Um, I didn't feel like going with monochrome images and monochrome background were too far off um, in this particular art journal page. Like it wasn't too busy because this whole pad of paper kind of sort of does the same thing. It uses very um, few colors, just a few blues, some grays and whites, and a little bit of a, a brown there. And it's a beautiful pad of paper. So you know, when you're feeling crafty, but you don't have a specific plan of action, mimic, mimic what you see on Pinterest, mimic what you see on YouTube, mimic what you see in the pattern paper, because really you're just looking for an outlet for that um, creativity in your body. I know in my world, if I don't, if I have something in my brain and I don't get it out, then it, I, I, I'm stumped. I can't work on another project until I finish the one that's rolling around in my brain. And sometimes even I wake up at night and have to put a note in my phone of something that I thought of, or I can't go back to sleep. And that's just how you have to work. When your creativity strikes, you have to work around it. And I wanted to create an art journal page, um, partially for a video and partially because I was just feeling that I want to make something pretty. It had been kind of a weird couple of days scheduling wise, and I just wanted to make something pretty. All right. So this is the whole page. I'm not sure exactly where to sign it without writing over anything. So I just did a quick sign in date down at the bottom left hand corner there. And this is my whole page. I hope you enjoyed this quick art journal page. Do something crafty for yourself today. It, it's good for you. It gets your juices flowing. Thank you so much for stopping by. I have a couple of videos here that I think you might like, as well as a subscribe button. If you have not subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you do so. And as always, have a really, really fabulous day.